Hi everyone, it's Susie at the AKC National Championship presented by Royal Canin. And we are looking at Megan and Harry, but that's not why we're here. I'm going to pan out and show you why we're really at this booth. I want you to look at probably the best looking face here. This is a Sussex Spaniel, and we have a very special interview with this person, Marcia Dugan. And Marcia's claim to fame is that she brought the breed to the United States after World War I and was the first one to do it. World War II, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just got done telling her how young she looked for having done this even in the 70s, and here I just made her older. Marcia, how did you get interested in this breed in the first place? It was... And you're, I'm going to ask you to shout because the acoustics of this building are terrible. I got interested in this breed because they needed someone. There were four breedable Sussex left after World War II. And in the country or in the world? In the world. Wow. And they were all in England. They weren't here. And there How were... How did you know they were in trouble? From the research, and the research wasn't easy then. We didn't have computers or anything. Mm -hmm. But we brought in 1970 two dogs over from England. We waited for two years to get them. They were so hard to get. And so then we had two of the only four in the United States. Wow. And so we've gone from four dogs in 1970 and 71 and 72 to about 600 in the United States now. Wow. But it's taken a long time, a long, long, long time years. to do it. We got into them because I had golden retrievers and my husband had German shepherds and we wanted something smaller. And we just did some research and they, we found out that they were almost extinct and they needed us. Wow, and so you essentially res helped resurrect the breed from total extinction. Did the breed turn out to be what you expected when you lived with them? Pretty much. They're, they're a really great dog. And what we did back then was we kept our whole first litter. And we learned so much from keeping a whole litter of seven dogs. And that's the way you had to do it then. You couldn't go on the computer and Google things or anything. And Marcia, it worked do you out think well. This, this baby would lie down for us so that we could look at this beautiful dog while you're talking? Maybe. <laughs> I know. Easier said than done. He seems pretty comfortable. I hate doing it to you. That's all right. Now I'll, I'll go this way so that we can. Oh, I'm a little too far away, but we'll do the best we can. So you kept the entire litter. What was the breakdown in gender? In gender? Uh huh. Uh, we had. Uh, Four boys and three girls. And what did you learn? Why are you glad we, you kept that litter? We learned all about the breed. We learned that they don't all grow up looking the same. We found out that they can have different personalities. We found out uh, grooming is different sometimes on them because you can have a slightly wavy coat or you can have a straight coat. And we educated a lot of judges. We had one judge that we took a Sussex in the ring, and he said, this can't be a Sussex Spaniel because there aren't any Sussex Spaniels in the United States. And we're going, well, yeah. And here it is. Here it is. Wow. And we learned a lot about the breed, and we've taught a lot of people about the breed since then. Did you have a hand in forming the breed club here in the country? My husband and I and Bill and Peg Reed and Bobby Lewis formed the Sussex Spaniel Club of America in 1981. And I'm the current president. So now the breed numbers we know are not great in England right now. No. For reasons that baffle me because this is a terrific breed, terrific size, and I'll get into that in a minute. How are the breed numbers in the rest of the world? There are a few in the Netherlands, there are a few in Australia, there are three or four in Russia. That's about it. Yeah. So tell me, 
Does it baffle you as much as it baffles me as to why this breed is in trouble in its country of origin? Not at all. They're hard to breed. Okay, good to know. What's hard about them? They absorb. They reabsorb. Uh, the males aren't particularly interested in breeding, but it's our lovely, lovely females that bear the brunt of the responsibility. They have to get pregnant. Uh, sometimes they don't come in season for the first time till two to four years. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you have a bitch that you're lucky to get one litter out of. Uh, a lot of C-sections, a lot of assisted breedings. Someone just commented, look at the size of his paws. I, I love the size of his paws. Buddy, may I hold your paw? Oh, you're tangled up in the vine, baby. Oh, this how magnificent. A, girl. Girl, I'm so boys. sorry. What's her name? Mischief. Mischief. Hello, Mischief. And the boys are generally a bit bigger. Uh, they average 35 to 45 pounds. So if the breed is difficult, you would dissuade a first-time dog owner from having one? I would say if you want a Sussex Spaniel, be prepared to wait. Get on a breeder's waiting list. Get on two breeders' waiting lists. And keep your fingers crossed because but you as have a breed to, to wait. live with, are they suitable live with? for first-time owner? The females are dog dominant. If you have more dogs in your house and different breeds, you will find a Sussex female will be the boss. Interesting. In a lot of breeds, it's the male that has those The issues. males are more couch potatoes. Dog dominant. Okay. Not person dominant, yeah. but dog dominant. Is it a good breed for children? And if they're raised with children. Okay. How about the elderly? They're a big solid dog that someone who's old could trip over right. them or right. something. But and do you know anyone who hunts over a Sussex? Yes. And what style of hunting are they? Upland game or? What? They do mostly birds, upland game, but they will hunt rabbit. Okay. And uh, there's a difference in the sound they make. That's one reason they weren't popular here for a long time as, and still are as a hunting dog. They give tongue, okay. they call it in England. And there's a different sound for fur than there is for fowl. And yet the people who hunt over them admire that aspect in the breed when they can tell what they found, I would think. You would think, but here we have more open fields, and in England where they were developed, it's all heavy hedgerows, underbrush. Right, and hedgerows. And, and, they and yet that's fruit. part of the reason why they're built this way, isn't it? And it's one of the reasons that they give tongue on a set, so you can tell where they are. But the long and low, they get through brambles somewhat easily, don't they? Right. And it just but look falls at this big, big, heavy head that they just push right through. Oh, how interesting. Well, they're just a lovely breed. And that's why we have the little droop in the eyes. Because if they get brambles and weed seeds and stuff in the eye, if you've got that little droop in the eye, the then you can, yeah, the haw, you can wipe it out. If they have a tight eye, a seed would get in there yeah. and just rub and rub and right, rub. Right. Oh, how interesting. So what's the prognosis for this breed, do you think? It's in better shape today than it's ever been. We have more dogs. We have more people that are interested. That's awesome news. Do you have juniors in the breed? Not as many as we'd like to have. Pardon me? Not as many as no. we would like no, to have. No, none of us do. There's too many other things for kids to do nowadays. Yeah, too many choices. I can't thank you enough for your time. I got really lucky finding you. When I came by earlier and was told that you were here, I just said, uh, I am so coming back. Harry and Megan are just kind of a uninteresting compared to the story you've just shared with us, at least thank to you. me. Well, and you picked up a medallion today. Were you? What uh, was the... She was a uh, bred by exhibitor. Oh, very yes. nice. Well, folks, I'm running out of juice. I'm going to have to recharge a little bit, but we're going to close out on this beautiful face. And thank you, Marsha, so much for your time. Thank you for what you've done for this breed. All right, folks, I'll be back in a little bit.